The Presidential Task Force PTF on COVID-19 has extended the gradual easing of the lockdown by two weeks. The PTF chairman and secretary to the government of the Federation, SGF Boss Mustafa, announced this on Monday during briefing by members of the task force in Abuja, the nation's capital. According to him, in spite of the modest progress made, Nigeria is not yet ready for full opening of the economy and tough decisions have to be taken for the good of the greater majority. The PTF chairman also disclosed that the measures, exemptions, advisories and scope of entities allowed to reopen under phase one of the East lockdown shall be maintained across the Federation for another two weeks, effective from 12 midnight of May 18 to June 1. The lockdown order in Canada State, according to the SGF, has also been extended by another two weeks. Joining me live by telephone is communication strategist Edward Israel Ayide. Thank you, Edward Ayide, for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for having me, Benyak. The presidential tax force, in its wisdom, decided to extend the phase lockdown by another two weeks. Do you consider this a step in the right direction? Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think it's very, very needed. Uh, we know that what has been happening over time is that as people are coming out more and more and gathering in places, it seems like the spread of the virus is increasing. Uh, of course, more tests have been have been done over this period as well, but it seems that a lot more people are infecting others at the moment. So I feel that it is very, very important and very, very needed what they have done by extending the partial lockdown, at least reduce the incidence of people gathering in places like malls and churches and other public uh, places for another two weeks. I think it's a step in the right direction. Nigerians were expecting the president to address them, but the announcement was later made by the PTF um, boss himself, um, Boss Mustafa. How would you address the communication strategies deployed in handling the COVID-19 situation so far? It's it's been it's a bit it's been a bit haphazard. Uh, the information has been all over the place. Uh, the information that went out before was that the president was going to address the country. And after a while, uh, they said nothing was scheduled and all that. So for the most part right now, I know a lot of Nigerians are looking to hear the president speak on what is being done, what steps are being taken. And what has been happening is it's only members of the PTF and uh, members of the PTF and the uh, health ministers, both of them, who have been speaking to Nigerians and the press, which I feel is not the most reassuring that a government can do for its people. Uh, not to compare Nigeria to other countries in the world right now, but when Nigerians uh, elect a government official as a president or as a governor, they expect that that person will be the one who will speak to them when there's issues affecting their security, their health, or whatever. You. But what has happened right now, it seems that uh, the president is being hidden behind layers and layers and layers of other people who are then communicating one thing today, another thing tomorrow. And I feel it's not going to be as reassuring for a lot of Nigerians, which is why you, of course, have a lot of people who still believe that this whole uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is a scam. Uh, I, I remember I was having a conversation with uh, a tri cleaner the other day who told me that, oh, government is just using it to steal money. So, of course, there are all those conversations going on in pockets and pockets of, uh, uh, of the society which will definitely increase the spread of this virus as people are going to go around not taking care to be cautious and to stay healthy and safe. Let's contemplate for a moment the consideration for full reopening of businesses, churches and mocks by the Lagos state government. What the present reality is, should this be considered? Well, you, you really cannot. I, and and I, I, I appreciate what the governor of Lagos state is trying to do. You really cannot shut down the entire country. Uh, after a while, people will begin to feel the brunt. Uh, of course, there's not been a lot of uh, palliatives of support given to those at the bottom of the pyramid. So you're going to have a situation where businesses are not going to be able to pay for pay their staff and then massive retrenchments and all the like will come in. So I appreciate that it wants to reopen the economy, uh, but the approach that is going about also... Uh, I hope that it doesn't become one of the usual government bureaucracies and red tape. Uh, I like the approach of saying everybody needs to show that they are capable of ensuring the safety of people who, uh, of people who come into their places of business. I think it's a good approach. 
I just hope that it does not become the usual government bureaucracy or an avenue for uh, people at local government or at other levels of the state government to begin to extort business owners. The economy needs to open up, but it should be done in a way that is transparent and that is very, very supportive of business owners so that they as well can go on uh, providing services and paying their staff. A legal state should eventually come up with new guidelines. Do you see proper compliance? Bearing in mind that May 4th, the first phase of the of the ease lockdown, there were guidelines and measures put in place by the Lagos State government. And we saw how flagrantly people disregarded and flouted those guidelines. Do you think there'll be what difference is it going to be make this time in compliance to whatever guidelines they're going to put in place? What again, what I'm what I feel is happening, uh, which I mentioned earlier is that a lot of Nigerians, and especially Lagosians, still believe that the entire COVID-19 pandemic is a, is a scam. Do you understand? So uh, the government, in as much as they are releasing guidelines and trying to sensitize people and the like, a vast number of people are still going about their daily lives as if nothing is happening. Do you understand? Uh, you see people breaking curfew. You see people uh, gathering in religious uh, places because they want to do night vigil or pray or what a view. You see people going to uh, hotels and all the like. A lot of people still feel that this pandemic is distant from them. So I wouldn't say that uh, the government has not done as much as it should do uh, in terms of sensitizing Lagosians and Nigerians. But I feel what is missing, what is still missing is that I think the government, both at the state and the national level, has not actually carried along some key people who would help to disseminate the message to the people at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, religious leaders, uh, even the if, even even traditional uh, leaders who can speak to the people in their communities and let them understand that this issue is real. These things need to be done so that people do not spread the disease. I feel the government needs to maybe look at that layer. But in terms of compliance, I feel what is happening in Lagos is still going to continue happening. People are going to continue breaking uh, curfew. People are still going to gather in places. And even with the risk of arrest and fines, people still go about it like there's no big deal. It's, 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 really, it's really troubling. Edward Israel Aide, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time.